What's going on YouTube? You can tell the intro we got going on here is a little bit different. Tents are closed today. Today's episode actually has nothing to do with in here, but it's got to do with out here. Welcome to Bonsai Gardens, home melon garden, and various fruits and veggies as well. So we're going to take a peruse around. I did find some issues. I want to give you guys some free and easy information and some home remedies on how to get rid of some certain pests. So let's go for a little look around. All right, let's take a look at the planter box that we built. Really basic, doesn't have to be anything special. These are just fence pickets, four of them put in a square, filled with our local soil company soil, it's called Full Circle. And then uh, we have a zucchini right here and another zucchini, as well as a comfrey. Our peppers we decided to do in pots because it's a lot easier to move them around when they're getting turbo fried by the sun out here where I am. We have another zucchini, a little bit smaller. She's been taking way more sun than these other girls have. And you can see there is quite a bit of difference between that. And we have a cucumber back here. Uh, it's just started to blossom. You can tell some of these leaves look a little bit ratty. Hopefully that should improve here over the next week or so. And then of course we have some marigolds in the bed to try and drag out some pollinators. Earlier, I was working in the bed. You're gonna notice I got a water bottle right there. Found out that we actually have a really good infestation of black sugar ants. Why are we so worried about black sugar ants? Well, these black sugar ants actually farm aphids. Now, if you're not too familiar with aphids, soft-bodied insect, they actually feed on the sap of our plants and they excrete, after they're done eating, basically they poop out sugar. And those black sugar ants really like that stuff, so they actually carry aphids around on your plants. So that's why we want to attack this one right away as soon as we find it. So you can see here on this, hopefully it'll focus up for you guys. We have piles of these little sugar ants going in here. I'm going to go over making this little trap. Three simple, four simple ingredients actually. And it's going to cost you a fraction of what it would be to buy a regular ant trap. So. This is what we have going on in the planter bed. Really enjoy working in there. That one you see over there in the left hand corner is a comfrey and that is for our worm bin actually. But we'll go over the worm bin in a separate episode. Let's go ahead and spin around, take a look at what I really enjoy doing and see the plants that I really enjoy growing. Oh. And here we are. I absolutely love melons. And this melon patch is actually all being grown in pots. You can do that. You just have to be careful about how many fruits you grow per plant. And then you're also gonna notice that we have them actually strung up. We are doing what they call vertical farming with these. And this is because we're a little bit uh, constrained on space for our garden area. Now, vertical farming like this has a couple of different benefits. One, like we said, it's a, a space saver. But two, we're trying to make the pollinators jobs really easy when they're coming through to do their thing. Now this one, these two, actually, yeah, pretty much the whole cantaloupe, I just got done restringing up. When you look at these blossoms, they are now basically all in a line. And when the pollinators come out in the mid morning, it makes it very easy for them to just bounce from flower to flower. It helps with our guaranteed pollination. This is our cantaloupe. You can see they're just getting started and super excited for these. It's one of my favorite melons of all time. We do have a San Marzano tomato and a Roma tomato as well. This is what they refer to as an 
indeterminate, meaning this thing can grow as big as you want it to, versus a determinate, which means it'll only grow to a certain height. So we've got a couple of different things besides the melons, but we have 11 different varietals going back here. So let's take a look at some of the ones that we know have definitely set fruit. We have our crimson red watermelons back here. Now, you can let them rest on the ground, but our soil stays rather moist constantly. And to avoid rot, I just take like a masking tape roll or a tape roll of some kind, and I go ahead and I set the melon on there. So that helps us prevent that, uh, what do they call it, bottom rot or something like that on melons. Ah, either way, it's one of the ways to help make sure that your melons make it to the end of the season. So we've got it done over here on this one as well. And then we're going to take a little bounce on over and take a look at our baby sweet watermelons. We have a couple of really good ones going right now. You can see this. That girl's pretty massive. She probably weighs about six pounds. We're going to be getting close to harvest and how we determine that is this little tendril right here is basically your countdown timer. The tips on it have gone brown, so that lets me know that this melon is starting to ripen, or starting its process to ripen. And as soon as this tendril is brown, that is when we know that our melon is ready for harvest. So, a couple of really good ones. Uh, unfortunately, the melon vines are extremely long on the watermelon, so we can't have them vertically farmed all the way. And we have a canary melon as well. Oh no! Look at them, suckers. Squash bugs. Looks like I'm going to have to sprinkle down some diatomaceous earth. That is going to be your number one deterrent versus squash bugs. So, looks like we got a couple of things to talk about today for our pest management. It's super hot out here. I'm glad you guys got a chance to finally see the garden. Let's go inside. Let's talk about the couple of different things we can do for the ants. And, unfortunately, just found them. Squash bugs. All right. Now that we're back in the AC, let's talk about that trap that I built. Now, we need four ingredients for that. Of course, we have our water bottle. I've already measured it out. This is actually borax. You can find this in a majority of grocery stores in the laundry section. Um, I know Walmart, Target, places like that carry it. I found mine at a local store called Scolari's. Um, I don't know why they always come through with the clutch weird stuff, but they always got it. Anyway, we're going to take one tablespoon worth of borax, and then we're going to take about one quarter cup of sugar, and then we're going to take uh, ooh, a leak in there, uh, about a tablespoon worth of honey in there, and then we're going to go ahead and shake that up before we add our water. So let me go ahead and get that done for you guys. Worthy cause. Our honey. Now the honey and the sugar is what's going to draw in the little black sugar ants and the borax is basically what's going to serve to kill them. Now uh, there's two different ways that you can do this one. You can add enough water to basically where you're going to make it a liquid. They'll drink that liquid and die immediately or you can do like a crystallized form, almost like a little bit of a slushy, and that'll make it so that they will take it back to the nest and it will start to kill the nest for you. So now I'm just about there. I know this is taking a lot of time. Thank you for your patience while I do this. Yeah, we're pretty close. We're pretty close. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it looks like enough honey. Now that we have our honey, our borax, 
and our regular sugar. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix that up a little bit. Now, this is the first solution that I have for you guys. I do have uh, two more. One you can use in home. This one, do not let your kids or your pets get into the bottle. It is not good for them. So that is the first precaution that I will give you about this one. So if you're going to do the water bottle tactic, make sure it's away from where things can get to it. Um, the second thing, what was I trying to think about? We'll get to that here in just a second, and that's when I'm going to cut the hole in the bottle. So, looks like we got that nice and mixed up there. You can see there's like a ball of honey. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. That little yellow spot right there. Getting nice and coated in the sugar and the borax. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to add water to probably about a quarter of the way full on this. And then we will shake it up, cut the hole, and then you'll have your homemade ant trap. This is the one that I will use in the planter bed and around the melons. Works very well. And, but like I said, not safe for the pets, not safe for the kids. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set that one off to the side. I know I just have to add water to that one. Let's talk about the next solution. The next one's actually going to be for in your home. So if you have like sliding glass doors, windows, things like that, that you know that these little sugar ants are coming into, baking soda and powdered sugar. Now, baking soda is toxic for them, so uh, another way you can use this is you can sprinkle this directly on your plants. It's not going to have any harm for them, but you want to do it in what they refer to as the dry down day. So the day in between waterings, that way it can stay in its powder form. That's one way you can use it, or if you're going to be using it inside the house, you take one part baking soda to one part powdered sugar and you mix that together. Usually what I do is I put that in the small soda cap. Now, the black sugar ants can't decipher the baking soda from the powdered sugar. Baking soda is toxic for them, so they will actually die. They'll bring it back to the nest and it will kill off the nest for you. Uh, basically, you would want to swap these traps probably about once a month just because they can tend to get a little bit hard if you live in an area that has humidity um, and things like that. So those are the couple of solutions that I have for the black sugar ant. And the reason that I do it is if you think about it, this, this right here cost me about $8.00. You know, honey can be a little bit expensive. I mean, you can do this with just a regular old cheap honey from the store. You literally spend five bucks on it. And then however much bag of sugar is, you know, a couple bucks on that one as well. So, and I'll be able to make this trap not just once, but multiple times. And I know it will be effective. So, I don't see the reason in buying those uh, name brand ant traps if you do something like this. Very simple to do, very quick, very easy. Same thing with the baking soda powder sugar mix. That one completely, as you know, that one's gonna be kid friendly and pet friendly as well. So let's talk about the next pest that we found right when I was doing some filming. And you know what's funny is I actually went through and I inspected the garden, thought I didn't find anything, and then lo and behold, on the canary melon that's probably about two or three weeks away from harvest, it's just how it was yellowing, uh, we found some squash bugs. Now, I thought I had all my goodies here at the table. Let me go ahead and grab this other one. The good old diatomaceous earth. Now, you can find this at like any hardware store, uh, usually in a gardening section, they do have this. Basically what this is, is it's like, uh, fossilized plankton uh, and it looks like razor blades underneath the microscope so when dealing with squash bugs this is one of your best deterrents that you can use now this can be put directly on the plant as well and you know on the soil again during a dry down day otherwise it's not going to be as effective now when you're dealing with squash bugs and using this if you have a mass infestation of them 
make sure that when you are applying your diatomaceous earth that you are spraying the bugs down heavily as well. Um, it actually smothers them and it basically dehydrates them. So this is my number one go-to when it comes to the squash bugs. The next thing is, is always make sure you're going out and doing your inspections. I know it may be tough. We all have busy lives and things like that, but try and take at least one time in the day where you can get out there, take a look at your plants, spend some time with them. They'll definitely enjoy it. So here we are. We're at the end of the episode. I appreciate you guys sticking around for so long. Hopefully some of these tips that I gave you for some of the outdoor pest control and the little black sugar ants, etc., really give you the upper hand in having a successful garden. So if you guys enjoy the content, please give us a like, comment, and subscribe. I am gonna have a bunch more videos coming out uh, pertaining to like the tomatoes and the various melons. We'll kind of do like one-on-one -on -one episodes with each one of the varietals that we have going on. So until I catch you guys next time, have yourself a great grow.